Hey, what's up? Today, I'm gonna show you guys how to make what I would consider to be the Swiss Army knife of pizza dough. It's versatile, it's super delicious, and it does not necessarily require you guys to have a bunch of specialized pizza gear. From there, I'm gonna show you how to turn this dough into a Roman style pizza rosa, a big dog pan style pizza, and then finally, a New York meets Neapolitan style pizza that is going to be super dope. So to get started, I'm gonna grab my stand mixer. And if you don't have one of these, don't sweat. I will get to you in a second. Into the bowl of this thing, I'm gonna measure 245 grams of water, 20 grams of olive oil, four grams of instant yeast, seven grams of sugar, 375 grams of strong all-purpose flour, and nine grams of salt. The dough hook goes on, and now I'm gonna mix this thing on low speed for about three minutes. While that mixes, if you don't have a stand mixer, there are two alternative methods for combining these foods into a dough. The first is a food processor. Everything's gonna go into the pool, and then I'm gonna spin that on high speed for 15 seconds or or so just until things come together. And there we go. This dough is not strong, but it is well mixed. We are gonna fold this later so everything is totally fine. The only downside to this method is getting it out of this bowl can be a little bit sticky, but it is faster than using a stand mixer. The other mixer-free method is the good old-fashioned sturdy spoon in a medium stainless steel bowl. If you have seen a few of my bread and pizza videos, then you are gonna be very familiar with this process. If you have not seen me mix this by hand, the move here is just to stir everything up until combined with this spoon. Then I'll come back with a wet hand to squeeze and turn everything in the bowl for just a minute or so until there's not any dry clumps of flour. And that looks good. Again, this is gonna need some future folding just like the food processor version, but the lid's gonna go on and we're gonna call it mixed. Back to the mixer. I prefer this method for making this dough. The texture in the end is better and it's a little bit easier to shape into various pizzas later on. After three minutes on low speed, I'm gonna turn this up to medium high speed and continue to mix for about four more minutes or until the dough clears the bowl and starts to slap around a little bit like this. And after about seven minutes, as you can see, when I pull on this mixed dough, it does not tear and doesn't look shaggy at all. It's very pretty. Now, I'm gonna grab a medium stainless steel bowl. I'm gonna hit that with some olive oil and move it on over. The lid's gonna go on and I will check back on this dough in 45 minutes. After that 45 minutes, we can see just a little bit of rise going on. And now to finish building strength in this dough, I'm gonna do the classic tried and true strength building hold. For that, you know I've got a wet hand, and now I'm gonna use that hand to grab a grip of dough, stretch it out just until I meet some resistance, and then I'm gonna fold it back over. I'll repeat that four to five times all the way around the bowl, and then to finish, I'm gonna do the tried and true slap and fold rounding move that I do for all of my doughs. All I'm doing here is just folding this dough in half while rounding it off to get some tension. The goal here is to get this dough pulled into a nice, taut little ball, and that looks good. The lid goes on, and now this is gonna go into the refrigerator to ferment for as little as six hours, but preferably 24 hours. Now, let's take a look at the hand-mixed version of this dough. That is a shaggy boy. Since we did not mix this dough with seven to eight minutes of mechanical force in the beginning, it does need some additional support to get the full-on gluten maturity. Simply put, we're gonna need to stretch and fold this dough two separate times or twice as much as the stand-mixed version. I'm gonna fold it once at 30 minutes and again at 45 minutes. And if you mix your dough in a food processor, I'm looking at you too, bud. And what do you know? After two folds, the hand-mixed dough looks just as taut and tight as the one mixed by a robot. And into the fridge overnight it goes. The next day, or 24 hours after we mix, the dough has grown by quite a bit, about double actually. It looks buoyant, alive, and it's all gassed up. Okay, the first and easiest way to make this into a pizza would be to go Roman style, in my opinion. Specifically, Pizza Rosa. This is gonna be a variation on the classic street pizza that is ubiquitous in Rome. It's rustic and robust and free of cheese gets a five out of five dopes. To get started, I'm gonna flip this dough out onto a lightly floured work surface. Then starting from the end closest to me, I'm gonna roll this up loosely into a tube shape. And if you see any bubbles pop up, make sure to give those a little pinch to get rid of them. Next, I'm gonna grab a half sheet tray lined with parchment paper and then hit that with a generous dusting of flour and the tube's gonna go over onto that tray. Now I'm gonna cover that with another sheet tray and let this cold dough proof and warm up on the counter for 90 minutes. Now it's been 90 minutes and this dough looks proofed up and looks ready to bake. So I'm gonna grab my pizza peel and then slide this whole setup onto that peel parchment and all and then I'm gonna top this with a gratuitous amount of olive oil probably about a quarter cup don't be shy once that's all greased up with olive oil now I'm gonna use my fingy tips to perforate the dough into a nice gassy dynamic looking slab shout out to my very 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 close friend Ted Wilson yet again this pizza rosa is an homage to his version at Union Loafers it's real dope if you live in St. Louis buy that bread next comes the rosa part of this whole thing meaning tomato sauce because 
red. I'm gonna be laying that on pretty liberally as you can see here. The sauce on this pizza is simply very nice crushed tomatoes. Bianco Di Napoli brand is a modern legend. Mucho recommended if you can get it. And I top that with seven grams of salt and stir everything up to combine. And there we go, chunky, sweet, mucho robust, rustico tomato sauce. This version of Pizza Rosa has a lot more tomato on it than the Roman ones that I have had. And for that, I am unapologetic. Tomatoes are delicious and usually more is more, but clearly I went a little bit too hard here. It's a little slop doggy on the side. So I'm gonna tidy that up with a little bit of paper towel real quick so we don't mess up the oven. Speaking of oven, I'm gonna load this pizza into a really hot one. I've preheated this one to 550 degrees Fahrenheit or 287C, and I'm gonna load this pizza right onto my preheated steel for best results. But an inverted back of a sheet tray or a pizza stone will also work pretty well. Just keep an eye on the bottom. This pizza is pretty thick, so it's gonna take about 14 to 18 minutes total to cook, depending on your oven. But if you're asking yourself, hey, Bri, that looks pretty burnt, bro. I see why you're thinking that but I very much disagree. The tomato product here does get a little bit dark in some spots for sure, but I really don't find it to be bitter. I always bake my pizza rosa super dark. Now to take this to the next level, I'm gonna go with a classic bad boy move, hit it with some chili oil. To make this chili oil, I took a tablespoon or so of Calabrian chilies straight from the jar, topped it off with about four tablespoons of olive oil, stirred everything up to combine. Now that olive oil is gonna be fully indoctrinated with that amazing fruity spiciness of the Calabrians. And I wanna mention, this style of pizza can also eat easily be made with cheese. Just par bake the tomato part for about 10 minutes and then add any cheese and toppings that you want. That was a Saturday staff meal favorite at the bakery when I worked there, but as is with tomato and chili oil is my truth. This is an amazing snack or appetizer or picnic food and all around, I like it. Next, pizza. Okay, like before, this dough's been in the refrigerator overnight. This time, I'm gonna grab a well-seasoned 12-inch cast iron pan. I'm gonna hit that with quite a lot of olive oil, like five glugs worth. And then I'm gonna spread that from edge to edge, top to bottom. Now, the dough's gonna get flipped in, and I wanna mention, if you don't have a large cast iron pan, I made sure this dough will cover a half sheet tray also. For process on how to get a pizza dough to fit into a half sheet tray, check out the process here in this old embarrassing video. And let me know in the comments how much you think that video sucks. I do. Don't watch it. Now to spread this out, we got to have oily fingers. And once those are nice and covered, we're going to start pushing and dimpling this all the way out to the edge of the pan. There is no real art to this. All we're trying to do is just to get this pushed out to the edge. And once we're there, we're going to cover this with a lid and let it rise on the counter for 90 minutes. After that 90 minutes, this dough has risen by about double and it's up to room temp now. So we're going to build it into a pizza. First down is the sauce. For that, I went for a half batch of my Detroit style cooked pizza sauce. That's a half can of nice crushed tomato or roughly 400 grams and I'm gonna set aside a quarter of those tomatoes for now and behind that 25 grams of tomato paste three grams of salt five grams of sugar a quarter teaspoon of dried oregano and a quarter teaspoon of dried basil immersion blender goes in I'm gonna puree all that up until it's smooth and now in goes the rest of those crushed tomatoes for a little bit of added texture and grip to finish this sauce real quick into a saute pan over medium heat goes two strong glugs of olive oil about 10 grams in total then a large clove of garlic that I've minced once it's bloomed up and just starting to get brown in goes all the tomato stuff that we just spun up, stir everything to combine, reduce the heat to medium, and simmer for about 15 minutes to reduce. The final consistency here should be thickened just a bit like this. And when you push a spatula through it, you can see that looks like pizza sauce thick. All day, I'm putting on about a third cup of sauce, if I had to guess, quite a bit. Pan pizza can really handle it. Next down goes shredded mozzarella. This is the full fat kind from the deli counter at my grocery store, and I'm going to make sure to go edge to edge here to get a nice fried cheese exterior to this pizza. Then, of course, thinly sliced pepperonis, classic pizza stuff, and I like to sneak a little bit of fresh mozzarella in there when I've got that in the fridge as well. And oh yeah, don't forget pepperoncini dogs. This is the classic b-boy combo pizza right here. You got to try it, and I'm gonna finish this with a bunch of grated pecorino cheese or Parmesan if you've got it. Now I'm gonna load it into a 550 degree oven and bake it for about 18 to 20 minutes. I'm baking my pizza right on the steel because a lot more energy is gonna be transferred into the bottom of the pizza, but there's always a chance that the top is gonna to cook faster than the bottom. So once you pull it, if the top is melty and bubbly and cheesy and all the good stuff that we want, but the bottom is still like a eight out of 10, we can throw it over onto the stove top on a burner and cook it for two to three more minutes to finish browning and frying the bottom of the pizza. And yes, after a few more minutes, this pizza looks dope. I like pan pizza a lot. It's easy to make. It's super satisfying and it's as good as it gets when you eat it cold, which is a very important thing to consider. Okay. Pizza three, back to the beginning. This dough has been in the refrigerator for about 24 hours and it's fully gassed up and ready to dance. I'm going to flour my board, flip it out, and then grab my gram scale to divide this into two smaller pieces. In total, this dough should give you two 320 gram pieces. Woo! 
320 on the first try, dude. Sick. Once divided, we're gonna grab a little baby sheet tray, hit that with some all-purpose flour real quick. Now to appreciate these into pizza-sized balls, we're gonna use both hands to pull out and fold the two sides of the dough. From there, we're gonna round and tuck this dough into a nice taut ball with a closed seam on the bottom. And once these are shaped into nice, tight, round balls, we're gonna cover this with a tea towel and let it proof up on the counter for roughly 90 minutes. After that 90 minutes, it's time to make our final pizza. For that, I'm gonna lightly flour my cutting board, then the dough ball, and now I'm gonna use my fingertips to push this out into a roughly seven and eight inch round shape with a raised edge of crust around the outside. From there, we're gonna switch over to a proper pizza stretching technique. For that, I'm gonna pin the dough to my board with my right hand. I'm gonna pull the dough out with my left and I'm gonna flip it over my right wrist and then flip it back over, turning the whole thing 45 to 90-ish degrees. This move is much less risky and beginner friendly than just throwing it up in the air like old school pizzeria style. I don't really know anybody who does it that way. There's a lot of ways to shape pizza out there. This is just the way I do it. Once this is stretched into a roughly 12 inch round with a little bit of a thicker edge out there for the crust. I'm gonna grab my peel, hit it with a bunch of semolina flour, and then I'm gonna lay down the dough. The sauce here is the same product from Pizza One, meaning crushed tomatoes and salt. I pureed this sauce with an immersion blender though to get it smooth, and now I'm gonna lay on three hefty spoonfuls. I'm gonna spread that edge to edge. Next goes down shredded whole milk mozzarella, and resist the urge to overdress a pizza like this. We're trying to toe the edge between like a little minimalist Neapolitan style margarita pizza and a New York cheese style pizza. It's a high hybrid kind of thing. And to solidify that Neapolitan vibe, we're gonna hit it with some fresh basil, followed by some creamy whole milk, fresh mozzarella cheese. And I'm gonna hit this whole pizza with some salt. In this case, large flake Malden salt is the best if you can get it. And then finally, a heavy bath of olive oil to cover the basil and to bring some more party to this party. This gets loaded into my preheated 550 degree oven right onto a ripping hot pizza steel or stone or whatever you got. After about two minutes, I always like to come back and check the bottom real quick to make sure things aren't getting burned or scorched. This steel was sitting in there for about 40 minutes getting red hot, so it never hurts to be safe. And after about seven to eight minutes in the oven, this crust is just starting to get nice and golden brown and crisp and the cheese has reached peak melt. Just look at this thing. The combo of shredded and fresh mozzarella here have melted into a milky cheese lava that just looks so totally sick. What I love about this pizza is that it's its own style for sure. It's a little bit New York, it's a little bit Naples, and maybe even a little bit of California in there as well. But who cares what it is? There's no rules when it comes to pizza. The most important thing is that this dough is versatile, it's easy to use, and it is quite delicious. Keep it in your back pocket for the next time you're on vacation sitting in that Airbnb and the squad asks you to bust out some pizza, or when you don't even know what kind of pizza future you might wanna be noshing on. Either way, it's gonna be delicious and fun and I really hope you like it. Let's eat this thing. Before I get out of here, if you guys like this video but are not yet subscribed, please consider hitting that subscribe button. It goes a long way in helping us be seen by other people on YouTube. As always guys, thank you so much for your time and attention. Thank you for sticking around to the end and we'll see you next time.